Hey guys, John here. So today we're in Pigments 5 and we're making an interesting patch called Nightmare Girl. And it's kind of a it's kind of a creepy just bell piano kind of things. <laughs> you know, you know the scary movies where there's like a creepy girl that's like kind of dressed in like raggedy clothes and she's just like looking at you and her body's moving at like one frame per second and it's just weird. So <laughs> that inspired me to make this creepy patch here. And like the, the decay is just weird. It's creepy. There, you kind of get that detuning vibe, right? Especially, especially doing creepy patches in a harmonic minor scale is just the chef's kiss. And if you hold it down, it kind of does some weird stuff as well. Okay, so let's get into this here. So I have a fresh copy of pigments here. Let's go to file and new preset. So if you look at this guy, we're not using the sequencer, obviously, right? So we are using <laughs> quite a lot of effects. So let's turn off our aux, our effects B, and our effects A. And let's kind of look at the synth and see what's going on. So we're using engine one, wavetable, we're using engine two, sample, and we're using a little bit of the utility engine. And we're just using one filter, which is my personal favorite, the MS-20. Okay, so let's turn off our utility, turn off our engine two, and let's focus on the wavetable. So this wavetable is gonna be made by the new folder that we have in Pigments called Pigments 5, obviously. And this wavetable is called a few. So let's go here, Pigments 5, and a few. So it's literally the second one down. So take a listen to this guy. This is kind of what this one sounds like. It's got a cool vibe to it. It's almost it's almost mysterious. It almost reminds me too, you know, in movies when people either get knocked out and things are kind of like blurry, the lights are kind of bright and they don't know what's going on. Their eyes are just looking off in space and you kind of like, what's going on? And maybe there's like distant gunfire. Maybe I look too deep into these wave tables. But anyway, let's get on with the patch here. So as you can see here, this position is going to be at 0.816 and that's because it really gets cool in that area. The kind of whistling tone, the whistling pig, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, it's so a point eight one six. Oh god, here we put point eight one six is where we're gonna manually set this guy. And it's gonna be randomized by random one at point two five. So we can literally drag and drop random one here. But let's take a look and see what random one's doing. So we're on Turing, so that's kind of fine. Poly keyboard, our rate is gonna be at one over eight. So we really don't have to do much here. And it's just gonna keep moving like that. Okay, yep, we're focused on this guy. Yeah, so it's just doing that whole thing. Now this guy, we're gonna be doing 2.09, which is probably just a mistake. It's really probably two voices of unison. And that is it here. And this guy, we're gonna pitch this up by one octave. So something like this here. All right, this one sounds a little different because we're going through the filter and we're changing the envelope, but we're pretty close here. So while we're talking about envelopes, let's look at the VCA. So this guy, I kind of move it, I guess, like this. I wish I had a bigger screen to have two pigments open. But anyway, we have our attack at one. This is going to be one, decay 300, 300, sustains all the way to the top. And we're really just changing our release to, of course, it's covered, uh, 1.49. So 1.49, here we go. Right, and we're going to my favorite filter, MS-20, so we can click this once. It's kind of nice, it's one click away, right? Should be a tagline, MS-20, one click away. So this cutoff is gonna be 2448 manually, right? So 2448. Resonance is gonna be 0.232. There we go, 0.232. Okay, now this is gonna be modulated by our envelope two at 0.17. So envelope two, drag and drop, 0.17, I believe I said, right? Okay, yeah, 0.17, okay. Now, envelope two, what's going on for this guy? I can just uh, kind of put it right here. There we go, that's, I guess that's fine. 
So envelope two, we have attack one, one, that's fine. Decay, 500, 500. No sustain, our release is gonna be 100, but it does look a little bit different here, and that's because we're changing the decay curve. Don't overlook this guy. Negative three, four, four, so negative three, four, four. Just a slight change, but I feel like it helps. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's check this guy. Check this guy. Okay, we're pretty much ready to move on. Oh no, we are not yet. So we have to do a little bit of our fine tuning. Okay, so this kind of adds to the dissonant that just the detuning stuff makes anything really creepy. This is LFO1 at 0 0.04, LFO1 at 0 0.04. Tiny amounts really go a long way, so don't overlook them. Now, this guy's moving super slow as we can see. LFO1, what's this guy doing? We're on poly keyboard as a retrigger source and it's going to 0.5, which I believe is that default. Yeah, 0.5. That's totally fine. So you can really just drag and drop and just bring down the depth. So if you listen closely, we can kind of see that, that kind of detuning sound. Subtle, but it kind of just compounds and adds different things. Okay, so we're done with the wavetable, the first engine. Let's go to the sample and turn this guy on. So let's highlight this guy and see what's going on with this guy. Kind of weird, right? So this sample is called a chord drop, and this is going to be in granular friendly chord drops. So let's go ahead and select this on this guy. So turn this off and then go to the second sample, turn it on. And then this one is going to be in, what did I say, chord? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, granular friendly, right? Okay, so granular friendly. Where are you? In the G's, obviously, because I know <laughs> my alphabet. Oh, God. Uh, what is this called? Chord drop. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's the hardest time I've ever had picking a sample. Good Lord. Okay. So even though it's granular friendly, we're actually not using granular at all. So if you target this guy, we're adding a little bit of unison here. Two voices, detune and stereo are default. So add two voices of unison. We're going to have changes from Bit Crush. So unison and add two voices like that. And I believe that is all we're really doing in this guy. There's nothing too insane, right? The volume is going to be negative eight, right? So we could probably bring that down negative eight because it kind of, it's just, it's just kind of filling this, this patch. Like the, the wave table is really the, uh, the main focus of this. This sample here is kind of just backing it up a little bit. I guess it's the idea behind that, right? So here's this guy and this guy guy so we're pretty much in the same spot this engine is pretty easy to do so we can turn this off and then take a look at the utility engine and see what's going on with this guy so if we hit a key on this guy all we're really doing it's kind of just having this noise here and a little bit of sub oscillator nothing too intense but this noise here is going to be controlled via this macro which is on noise and which is up which is why we hear it so what we can do is turn this on, and I really have always felt that this white noise and the analog noise together are extremely good choices for the noise oscillators. I kind of use these default noises quite a lot. They come in, come in handy quite a bit. So volumes are going to be all the way down for this guy. Now the first macro is going to be noise, so we drag and drop this here, and our depth really is going to be 0.45. So we can increase this to 0.45, like that, and then we can bring this up to really let's target this guy and really bring it up wherever we want it. I guess here's fine. It's really up to taste. So we'll label that noise. Cool. So next up we have our oscillator and this is going to be our direct out, our sub basically, which is generally I like to put on my third macro so we can set that up, which is always nice because if you do direct out on a sub and you have this at, I guess, a whims, a whims call, is it, what is that thing? Like a whims, something when something's easily accessible or something. I don't know. God, those sayings are dumb. <laughs> 0.75. I don't even know why I say those anymore. So 0.75. Something like that. Double click macro three, label this sub. So whenever we need a sub, we have something available for us. This really comes in handy because it's a clean low end, right? We're going direct out. We're not going to filters or effects or anything like that. It's just clean if we ever need it there. It's there. And it's in the, it's at a whim of a button, a whim of a knob, right? I guess we're gonna, we're gonna make that. Okay, so we have all of our three engines done. Let's turn on our wavetable. Let's turn on our sample. And our utility, utility engine is already on. So we have this. So it's already sounding pretty dissonant, which is kind of the idea of this thing, right? So now the effects we're gonna go and kind of just 
add on to that, which we're using quite a bit. So six, seven with the aux here. So let's turn on the A and kind of see what's going on. So we first have two delays into a reverb, which is kind of a fun thing to do, right? Playing around with delays is really cool. So let's go to our effects, and the first delay is fine because this already comes by default. One over four, one over four is fine. And we probably should do the high pass. I guess I'm going to do that here. Sometimes I forget to do those. And then we have the dry wet, which is going to be 26. So we can bring this up to 26 on this guy. Pretty cool. Now we're going to another delay. Now the fun thing about this guy is this guy's going to be one over eight dotted. So we can change this to dotted, bring this to one over eight. But we're going to do ping pong. Maybe a little high pass as well. And that's pretty much all we got to do. And then our amount's going to be 20. So we can leave it there, I guess. It's default. Next up, we have a reverb. Now this guy, let's see. I don't think we're doing too much crazy stuff to this. Uh, let me see. No, yeah, I think we're pretty, pretty default for this guy. Our dry wet's going to be 41, which we're <laughs> increasing this by 0.1. Or 1%. Okay. Next up, we go to FXB. So that one is pretty painless. So this guy is going to be a chorus into a multiband into a corrective EQ. So this chorus, if we go here, click R, where are you, chorus? There we are. So it's a little much, and we're going to be dropping this down to about 20, like that. And most of the values are default. It really comes out really nice out of the box, but it is a little much, so we do have to bring that down a bit. And next up, we have some multiband. I think this one really enhances our sound. So for this kind, I kind of want to bring down the highs a little bit. I'm going to squash those just a bit. It's kind of really up to taste, like I always say. Maybe bring up the lows a bit. Not so fun and dissonant. And then the last one here is going to be a little bit of corrective EQ. So select our EQ here. Now this guy, what are we at? 114. So select this guy, go down to 114. And maybe just bring out some of the low end that we just really don't like. So if we boost this, that's that gross stuff that we're trying to get rid of. And keep in mind, we always have a sub that can kind of replace that. We need it. And then we're going to be doing just a little bit of high shelf here. If we click this, we're going to be at about 3.8K, something like that. So 3.8, that's fine. And just a little bit of gain. Little changes there. And last but not least, we're going to be using an aux. And again, we're going to be using our post effects, which is new in Pigments 5, which I'm so happy about. So that basically means that all this process stack, what it's, what's changing our sound, is then going to be affected by this delay, which is really nice or this pitch shifting delay, I should say. So we can turn this on and go to a pitch shifting delay, which is right here. And our settings, if you look at this guy, if we look at our pitch shifting, it's bringing down by one octave, which is kind of a trick I like doing. If I want something dissonant, just drop it down by uh, not one octave, one semitone. And it just makes things kind of, I guess, nasty. Bring up our high pass here a little bit there. And then this is going to be at one over 16. So we can kind of increase this a little bit like that. I don't believe we did change too much, maybe a little bit more feedback. And that's a about it. Okay. So if you look here, this send to this reverb is on a macro, right? So by default, this is going to be down unless we want it, right? And if you look on this, so we can see that we have a detuned delay macro. So let's do that for this one. Detuned delay. There we go. Hope I still spell that right. <laughs> okay. So we can drag and drop this. It's the second macro onto the send. And the amount is going to be 0.68. So we can bring that up like this here. So whenever we want that, uh, Eight, whenever we want that detuned delay, it's easy for us to have it, right? So that's normal without it. And if we bring this up here. Right. It can get kind of messy, so that's why just a little bit of taste that this goes a long way. It's supposed to be kind of a... I guess uh, an accent and a little, little spice to this patch, right? So last thing that we really have to do is map our effects macro, which is uh, a lot of fun doing. So it's drag four, drag this here, drag this here to the second delay and the reverb. 
So this delay is 26, so bring that down, bring it up to 26, so I guess 0.1 minus, well, 20 is going to be down here, and this is going to be 20, like that, 0 0.20. Our reverb's 42, bring this up to 42. Now we can't, we could use a shimmer here. It's totally up to you if you wanna make it even more creepy. But I think it's pretty creepy enough, right? I don't think we probably need one, but go ahead and experiment if that's uh, something you're curious about. So 20%, 0.2, and then we're leaving the multiband and the EQ alone. And then the aux obviously is gonna be on this detune. So we're done with our effects. We can double click, click effects and turn this all the way up so our effects are working. Now, for whatever reason, if this is a little bit too detuned for you, remember on the wavetable here, we're going on the fine and we're kind of slowly detuning this fine. You can either reduce that, remove it altogether, or make it a little bit faster. Kind of really up to you how you want that to uh, how you want that to work. So, yeah, this is basically how you make Nightmare Girl, and it's a creepy one. And uh, yeah, don't look in the mirror tonight at two in the morning playing this. That might creep you out a little bit. Or like those like creepy old dolls, right? That like a 10 year old girl would play with. It's like all raggedy and like it just in the darkness is like, play with me, mommy. Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. So if you want to get this patch, there's a free link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.